We convene our sabermetric panel once again this year. It's great to have Vince Gennaro back, Sarah Langs, and Mike Petriello. This uh, this was a weird year, wasn't it? it was <laughs> it sure was. No, it was difficult to, to judge. You have small sample, especially here, and of course, this is the most volatile position. You put more work in this, Vince, saying than, than than every other thing combined, right? Yeah. Well, it takes me as long to do this as it does to do catcher, first base, second base, shortstop, third base combined. Especially when you have guys who this year were able to put together an outrageous 20 innings, right, which a lot of guys were. So let's just get into it. Um, I like your list, Vince, but we'll get to you. You have the anomalous list. There's going to be some surprises there. Mike, I think your, your list is a little more representative. Give us your top ten. Yeah, I'm the mainstream guy, apparently. Look at that, yeah. Uh, you know, I, listen, I started off with Liam Hendricks, and I, I do want to talk about him, a reason why. And it's not just like that a nice ERA in a couple innings. It's not what I looked at. Over the last two years, he has doubled the strikeout rate. He has cut his walk rate by uh, more than a third. And then if you look at this, what you can see here is he throws a lot of innings. Right? Over the last two seasons, he has thrown more relief innings than any non-Tampa Bay reliever, and we know Tampa Bay is their own setup here. And you can see, you know, war for relievers is not perfect, but that's a big gap because not only is he effective, he throws a ton of innings. He's got 96-mile-an-hour fastball with elite rise, uh, and I put him over Nick Anderson and Devin Williams. Um, I want to throw something in that we just, that you guys will all take for granted, but just for everyone in the audience. Um, the, the, through the history of the game, there are guys who figure it out, right, as they go along through coaching and through their own work and, and applied study. But now, Sarah, more than ever, there are guys in the, in the age of analytics who really can figure th new things out using all the technology. So, like, with Hendricks being number one, you know, for us anyway, it seems like there are a bunch of players that will reverse engineer a whole repertoire, and they can sustain that success. Absolutely. I think we've seen that, especially with relievers, and maybe it's the small sample that they work with that it's easier to sort of work through something and change something. But to the point about Liam Hendricks, I mean, Three years ago, he had a four-something ERA, and that wasn't the first year he'd done that. He'd done that for a couple of years in a row. Now he's at 180 and 178 the last two years, and it's really changed. I mean, I think the environment has been good for him, but there's definitely a lot of work there, and you have to imagine that there's a lot of additional information that certainly wasn't available 15 years ago mm. and probably not even 10 years ago. And Hendricks applies himself. He, really, he works yeah. at this. All right, so Liam Hendricks is number one for you. Go through the rest of your top ten. Yeah, so I had Liam Hendricks. I had Devin Williams. I did have him, too. I kind of thought about it as he two or three, but I really love the season that he had. And that changeup was maybe the best pitch in baseball in a very small sample size. He threw 20 something innings, but it was the best whiff rate of any pitch type for anyone, starters, relievers, anybody, the best batting average against and everything else. It has a nickname. It's called the airbender, which I love. We don't have a lot of pitches these days that actually have a nickname. So that's some additional points. But beyond him, I had his teammate Josh Hader. I had Nick Anderson at four. Aroldis Chapman at five, Zach Britton at six, Rizel Iglesias, who I thought had a really good year and that was really good to see at seven, James Karinchak with the strikeout rate, everything else at eight, Drew Pomerantz, who I always think of Mike with, uh, at number nine, and then I did have Seth Lugo at ten. I went back and forth with my ten. Seth Lugo had a six-something ERA this year. You need to look a little bit deeper. We're talking about small sample size. His relief small sample size mm. was much even smaller. He was a reliever, and then he had to become a starter because the Mets had so many injuries. I'm not holding the starter time against him he was really good as a reliever he was what we expect out of him as a reliever it's funny we don't go over our list beforehand the, the part of the magic of it otherwise we'd come to a consensus on this but I struggled with Luga but I just couldn't do it not not given that there's so much competition so much outrageous performance um I, I did hold the starting numbers against him all right Vince I like your list man I really do because it's a very different uh, Sarah's the high the, the high person on Devin Williams by the way because I wonder what to do with Williams the three of us have Liam Hendricks number one who's your number one. The one who fits my criteria the best is Josh Hader. Mm -hmm. So, you know, Hader is unworldly in that he allows less than five hits per nine. Nobody does that. Uh, 16 Ks per nine, uh, a 148 batting average against, and he's got a swinging strike rate of 21%. So to me, you know, certainly a year ago, Hader, I would have come in here and said Hader is number one, and I had nothing to dispel that this year. Right. Going down my list, I've got Nick Anderson, number two, and Ryan Presley, who over the last couple of years has emerged into one of the best swing and miss guys with that slider that he throws. Liam Hendricks at four, so I still love Hendricks, but I have him at four. Giovanni Gallegos of the Cardinals, I have at number five, who I think is someone who, again, delivers on a lot of the things that I like, including getting hitters to chase outside of the zone a lot. Now, I've got Zach Britton 
at number six. Sort of a holdover from a guy who was really in his peak a couple of years back, more mm -hmm. than a couple of years back. But again, when you combine what he does, and he's the only guy with an under 10 strikeout rate on my list, but with a 70% ground ball rate, and the way he's still tough to hit, and I, just, I really like the guy. Devin Williams, Aroldis Chapman, Amir Garrett, mm -hmm. and I have Kirby Yates at number 10. Uh, I really think that, you know, given what he's done the last couple of years, notwithstanding last year's elbow injury, that I think he'll be back. It was bone chips in the elbow. It's not a serious injury. You know, and I, I love that you have some different names in here. Now, you stuck with Presley. When I see 21 innings, 29 strikeouts, I'm no longer impressed, Vince. I got guys in 27 innings with 53 strikeouts, so it's not as much. But Garrett is a, is a good call. There's a lot of guys out there that are just effective where the ERA might not be blowing you away. And I know ERA is ERA. There's a lot more things to be looking at. Uh, but Garrett has been effective. Your body of work should count. Yeah. You know, like how consistent you are in a, a player preparing himself and then executing a season. Yeah, I totally agree. And that's why I, I and I also don't want to penalize someone too much for 2020, mm -hmm. not just because it's a small sample size, but because of the incredibly different environment that we operated in in 2020. Who knows what was going on behind the scenes with families, et cetera, uh, right. for, for 2020. Uh, you're the, you're, you had Edwin Diaz, man. That's brave. Look, at a certain point, you've got to finish off the at bat, right? He, he, he has trouble doing that. He's blowing guys away, not walking guys, but he's given up a lot of runs, Mike. Well, I don't know. I mean, if you look at the last year, and like I said, I'm not going to put too much in the ERA over a two-month season. His ERA was below two last year. He struck out 17 guys per nine. He does walk too many, right? Five per nine is, is too many. But what happened is if you look at his slugging percentage over the last two years, in 2019, he got blown up. It was over 500. This year, it was 287. And not only that, he's young. He is only going to be 27. If I look at all of these relievers, I agree with Vince. The first thing I look at is, do you miss bats? And for all of the problems Diaz has had, mm -hmm. he misses bats better than almost anybody. I hate to say yeah. that in this group, but I don't trust him. Wow. I don't trust him. No, there's, there's times where he doesn't execute the proper pitch after making guys miss wildly. I don't I won't trust him. Well, and you know, he does miss bats, and when he doesn't, they unfortunately big flies happen too often. It happened in the yeah. past. But you know what? I wish I had the guts to put to put Diaz at number 10 myself or somewhere on my list because I really believe in him <laughs> and I think he's going to have a big bounce back. I don't believe I don't have the guts. I wouldn't do it. Vince, good work there. Now you can you rest on your laurels from here on out. Thanks, everybody.